Time now for the morning rush. We start with Kristen Curry. Good morning. Not seeing anything in the way of rain or snow today. Just plain old sunshine for everybody across the state. And that's going to reflect in our numbers too. Warmer this afternoon. We continue with that warming trend in sunshine tomorrow. Crystal? Ready to head out the door. We are following the day's top local stories. We start with Fernanda Lopez live in the newsplex. Fernanda. New this morning, New Mexico State Forestry says they're anticipating an aggressive fire season and they're getting ready now. With 70% of the state facing severe drought conditions, forestry officials say even a tiny spark can start a big fire. Officials say they're expecting an early start to the fire season. State forestry is already getting their crews geared up. This year, they're training extra firefighters throughout the state to be ready when the calls start coming in. The warning for New Mexicans coming up in the Five Facts. David. Two people accused of covering up a 13-year-old's murder will face a grand jury next week. Jeremiah Valencia was found dead after missing for months. Jeremiah's mother, Tracy Pena, and Jordan Nunez, who are charged in his death, were supposed to appear in court yesterday. But the defense and prosecution agreed to post postpone her hearing. His mother's boyfriend, Thomas Ferguson, is accused of torturing and beating him to death. On to news happening right now. APD searching for a man who may have details about two missing roommates. That's 70 year old Eugene Carroll Ray and 28 year old, I should say, Zakaria Fry were reported missing last month. Police are now looking for this man seen driving Ray's car recently. APD is running forensics on that car after they found it. If you know anything about him, you're asked to call police immediately. Breaking news at 6. Former President George W. Bush says Russia did meddle in the 2016 U.S. elections. He made the statement while speaking in Abu Dhabi, saying, quote, there's pretty clear evidence that Russians meddled, forcibly rebuting fellow Republican Democrat, uh, Republican Donald Trump's denial of Moscow trying to affect the vote. Now, while U.S. intelligence concluded Russia did meddle, Numerous investigations are underway to determine if Trump's campaign aided the Kremlin in its efforts. On to some breaking overnight news now. A Texas police officer is dead. Another man recovering this morning after an hours long standoff in Dallas. Police said the officer was responding to a disturbance report at an apartment when he saw a shooting victim on the ground. Moments later, police say the suspect shot the officer. That sparked an hours long standoff that finally ended late last night with the suspect in handcuffs. The victim found on scene is recovering this morning. And as you wake up this morning, Vice President Pence is now in South Korea, landing just hours ago. He will lead the U.S. delegation at the Winter Games. His arrival comes one day after North Korea announced its hardline not to meet with U.S. officials during the Winter Games. Meanwhile, Pence pressed that the U.S. will soon hit North Korea with the toughest and most aggressive sanctions yet over its nuclear program. Happening right now, a proposal to make all child killers eligible for a mandatory life sentence is in the hands of the full House. This proposal is an expansion of the Baby Brianna Law. Right now, that law only applies to cases if the child is under the age of 12. Representative Sarah Maestas Barnes from Albuquerque sponsored this bill. We'll let you know when the House moves on a vote. Sarah. In just hours, hundreds of college students from all over the southwest region will be taking over the courtrooms here at District Court for a regional mock trial competition. Judges say this is the best way for students to develop important skills. The teams will be judged on presence, their grasp of the law and procedural issues, plus overall presentation. The top two teams from the regional will go on to the final, the national finals in Austin later this year. The winner gets $10,000 towards its law school. Back to you. Today's Metro Threat Index out of one. Just talking chilly temperatures this morning. Nothing to worry about later today. David? And a $100,000 grant will be used to help raise graduation rates in New Mexico. America's Promise Alliance partnered with AT&T to create Grad Nation Grants. The program hopes to raise the national graduation rate to 90% by 2020. United Way of Central New Mexico applied for the grant. Rio Grande High School will use the money to support juniors and seniors who are off track and re-engage youth who have dropped out. We're looking ahead for you on this Thursday morning. This weekend, people can enjoy some hot air balloons taking flight here in Albuquerque. Balloon Fiesta Park is hosting the annual Friends and Lovers Balloon Rally. It's free and calls itself the second largest hot air balloon gathering in the nation. Balloons will range from competition racers to special Valentine shapes. It's set to launch at 730 both on Saturday and Sunday morning. New at 6.30, an amino acid called asparagine, commonly found in food, may hold the key to preventing a deadly form of breast cancer. Researchers at Cedar sinai found limiting the amino acid dramatically reduced the ability of the cancer to spread. Now, foods rich in asparagine include dairy, beef, and eggs. Most fruits and vegetables are low in asparagine.
Kirsten. Time now for a check on traffic. We've got some minor slowing already this morning. It's I-40 eastbound right as you approach Coors, and that stretches towards 4th Street. Also, I-25 southbound between Paseo and Osuna down to about 35 to 40 miles per hour. Not shown on the map, but of course, we'll keep eyes on that throughout the morning for you. I love this next story. New at 6, this year's adorable Gerber baby is making history. Meet Lucas Warren, the first child with Down syndrome to be chosen as Gerber's spokesbaby in the company's 91 year history. He was chosen for more than 140,000 entries. Gerber says the little boy from Georgia had a winning smile and such a joyful expression. Isn't he adorable? Very cool. And finally, a live look at Philadelphia, where millions of Eagles fans are expected to be on hand for the team's victory. Yep, they're already lining up. And that parade is happening today. The Eagles won their first Super Bowl championship on Sunday after defeating the New England Patriots 71 to, or, I'm sorry, 41 to 33. Look Boy. at them. So excited. I know. Wow. What a day. There's yeah. folks that were camped out overnight. Yeah. Looks like good weather for it, too. Mm -hmm. Ready for it. All right. Time for the five facts. At number five, tomorrow morning, we will see the opening ceremony to the 2018 Winter Olympics, a rush of patriotism for all of those involved, including this, a small town New Mexico native, and he knows that feeling all too well. He's carried the Olympic torch twice now. Louis Vega just finished the torch relay for Pyeongchang. His first time was in Rio for the 2016 Summer Olympics. Now, Louis, the Socorro High School and NMSU grad, is one of 7,500 runners to participate in the torch relay. Pretty cool. Number four now, Lobo is heading into this weekend's game against Air Force without one of their players. This is after a shoving match on the court. You see it right there? The Mountain West Conference suspended Joe Fritzinger for violating the league's sportsmanship rule. He's the player in that video shoving the Boise State player at the end of that very close game on Tuesday. Coach Weir says he's disappointed in all of this. As for the Boise State player, he was given a public reprimand. At number three, temperatures comfortable today in the 60s here in the metro. Sunshine will blanket the state. The winds will stay light, 5 to 15 miles per hour out of the west and northwest. Warmer tomorrow, but increasing winds for the weekend. Some snow showers late Saturday night and cooler by Sunday. Number two, we are counting the minutes to another possible government shutdown if Congress doesn't act by midnight. Lawmakers are optimistic they will have the votes. The Senate is set to vote on the budget deal today. That would increase funds for the military for two years, but only fund the full government for the next six weeks. The House will need to vote on the deal, and some Democrats are still fighting for DACA, saying if it's not in, their vote is out. Number one, now the numbers are in. It's just not looking good for New Mexico. State officials say with 70% of the state facing severe drought conditions, they're anticipating an aggressive fire season. So crews are getting ready now, anticipating an early start to that fire season this year. The state forestry says they're training extra firefighters throughout the state to be ready for not if, but when a wildfire sparks. They're also warning people be extra vigilant anytime they're outdoors and especially around campfires. They expect fire restrictions in the coming months.